All right, what's going on everybody? So today we're working on the engine for the wagon again today. Um, I think I got all my timing components, so that's the first thing we're going to jump on is getting timing belts and all the timing components done. Um, it's uh, looking pretty bare right now. So we got, let's just start with the cam pulleys here. We got brand new ABCS cam pulleys, um, OEM. These are very expensive. And I decided to go with the Roger Clark Motorsports um, aluminum exhaust gears because the OEM ones are plastic and uh, I just, just want to make sure. I mean, they, they do sometimes break when you're torquing them and taking them off and occasionally I've, I've seen them break while running and it trashes your whole motor. So these weren't too expensive um, when you consider how much like a replacement OEM one was. It was like 50% 50, 50 more cost or so. It was about 240 bucks for both. Um, it's not too bad. So went ahead and got those. I also got these. Um, I found these bolts off uh, fastwrx.com. I'm not really sure. I don't remember who makes them, but it's super nice because it's um, the ABCS banjo and the, also the the cam pulley bolt. But they're they're not an Allen head, so they're just a regular 17 mil like the previous generations of motors. So this should help take them off if I ever need to because that's the number one thing these things do is strip so these should help a lot um, that's one thing I was really excited for so um, but on top of that <clears throat> um, I bought a timing belt kit but I bought one for this engine but with the with this setup um, I cannot use the water pump because the water pump is a three port <clears throat> And I am not using the uh, factory oil cooler or uh, heat exchanger, or whatever you want to call it. Um, would normally have a pipe that goes over to here, and there's a little little uh, boss, you know, on the oil filter that helps cool, or I guess it really helps warm up the oil uh, with the coolant. But I'm not using that, so um, I picked up myself a uh, brand new OEM. Um, this is actually a 2-2-T water pump, which supposedly these are like um, these flow a little bit more. The wheel design is definitely different in the back. I don't know if this is the reason, but uh, yeah. So this one <clears throat> from the later years of the 2-2-T only had two. So otherwise they're dimensionally the same, so should be no problem. I think you can also get one for a... 08 plus WRX or one of the ones that didn't have the oil cooler, but I've heard the 22T oil uh, water pumps flow more. So we'll put that guy on, get our hoses set up underneath here for our coolant stuff, um, get that all on, and then we can worry about the timing belt and some of the other fun stuff we got going. Okay, so <clears throat> I always use a little bit of copper spray on these gaskets. I always use a metal gasket and just one of these, it just helps with it just be a little bit tacky. If there are any kind of like small imperfections, it just helps fill in those little tiny gaps because I don't want to leak on this thing. Um, on more thrash motors, I might use something like a light film RTV, but this is how I'm going to prefer to do it on this motor because everything is brand new. So we got our bolts here. So it's going to take two hands, but I'm going to get this thing lined up. Okay, so let's put these in here. Let's get all these started first. Um, I believe these to torque to nine foot-pounds. I just do them in a star pattern and just make sure everything gets sealed nice and evenly. And then so <clears throat> we need to put our coolant hoses on, which go from these two guys here down to those. So pop those on. Then we can move on to the rest of the timing belt stuff. We get the thermostat and all that'll be last. Okay, well, <clears throat> I don't have my cam timing tools here today, so we're going to take a break from that. Move on to a little bit of mock up. So, um, this is our G30 770 uh, turbo we decided to go with. Um, very excited to see how this guy performs. But we just got it on here, just doing a little bit of mock up. Um, this is a temporary OEM header that I'm not using. Um, I'm probably going to take the one off the other car because I think the 08 plus ones are a little bit uh, bigger inner diameter inside. So we're going to get a, a better header on here. Still OEM. Um, 
I'm going to be using two OEM uh, casting end tanks, and then I'm going to be using one of these Grim Speed um, connector pipes, which helps flow a lot better, reduce back pressure. So that'll be pretty nice. So we, this all works perfectly. Um, this is a T3 flange um, and has the integrated uh, 44 millimeter wastegate right there. It goes, it, it ties back into the downpipe already. So it's the only thing we have to do um, is this right here. So I need to cut this. We're gonna, in a, a different day, we're gonna cut this flange off and I have a V-band flange on the back of here. Then we gotta just fabricate that up and make a, make a V-band for the downpipe. And all that should just work, and then we just have to make the exhaust from the from there back. So, um, but as far as plumbing, this is what I've been working on in the background a lot: is mapping all this stuff out, figuring out how we're going to do this. So, um, I have this oil feed kit. Um, this is from God, who made this? I think this was IEG made these. Um, this is for G series turbos. Um, it basically, just ties in in a banjo right here has a divider so it feeds oil pressure to your ABCS solenoid and it also tees off and comes around here and it already comes with the um, the little the special fitting for uh, this because this has a restrictor built into it when you buy these turbos it just has one in the fitting here so you can pop this guy off here you can see It's a lot easier with the cover off. Yeah, so it comes with the restrictor built in. So all you need is the right fitting to go on there. But <clears throat> I'll leave that off for now. But the the main the main thing is going to be making lines for coolant and oil feed or uh, drain. So this is kind of what I um, decided to do. I found one of these fittings for. Um, this is a 6AN with a half inch um, regular barb on the side. So this will be my return. So this is perfect because these turbos come with dash six fittings. So this will just screw right on there. And then this will just go right to the coolant tank right there. Easy enough, hose clamps. The coolant feed is what's a little gonna be a little bit harder. So the coolant feed is a dash six here, but <clears throat> it has to be a 90 because it's going to tuck pretty close in between the flange and this. And so we're going to make a dash 6 A in line from there. And then um, I got one of these Earl fittings. This one, I don't have the bolt currently, but um, in the next couple days, this should come in and we can make this line. But this is basically going to be um, dash 6. A N right here, and then we're just going to make a line to connect those two. Um, I just need the actual right banjo bolt for this to fit. Cause this is a uh, M14 by 1.25, I think it was, um, and I ordered the wrong one. I ordered the M14 by what is it? This is Earl's fittings. Earl's fittings are really nice, but this one. It was actually made for a fuel system for a carburetor, but it'll work for this. I just got the one with the 1.5 thread instead of the 1.25, so it just doesn't work. So, uh, got one of these coming from Summit Racing, and then we can make these lines. Um, got some dash six line, so we're gonna go through how to make some of these AN lines. Um, so the other thing is the oil drain. So we're gonna take this guy off. This is just on here for mock-up. But this is a dash 10 return. So I got one of these Torque Solutions, um, you know, Garrett Turbo, re you know, return kits, I guess you call them. Um, so it's nice that I pulled the uh, <coughs> factory drain pipe out of here. It's just a press fit. And this one just pops right in, has double O-rings. Uh, it's very similar to the IAG one that they make, but it's super nice as it just pops in, has a retaining bolt, Double O-rings, not gonna not gonna leak. And we have a dash 10 fitting on the side. So their kit came with um, one dash 1090 and a dash 1045. But with the T3 up pipe, that doesn't work. Um, 
there's just no room with I'm pretty sure this kit is designed for a V band up pipe so I had to order one of these these are all vibrant fittings by the way all of them are all vibrant so I ordered a vibrant straight so we're gonna go straight off the bottom of the turbo this is our dash 10 fitting and this is the angle it has to be clocked at you can see right there so we'll just make it you know dash 10 straight off the bottom and then it'll just make a straight shot down down there it's only going to be about five inches long or so but that should take care of our oil drain um it's going to be a little bit close here on the flange you can kind of see what i'm dealing with here and this one will go like that kind of through there but yeah so that should be coolant feed oil drain taken care of coolant return is the easiest one because we're just going to put i might have to modify this a little bit this is my factory expansion tank i'm thinking we'll have to cut the bottom of that off because this is just a mount that we're not going to be using anymore so we'll probably shave this guy down um, and just reuse all this stuff but it should work um, we're gonna be running our charge piping through here so you can see it's, it lines up pretty perfect so a lot of people were you know giving me concerns about charge pipe heating and you know, all that shit it's gonna be super hot being under the manifold it's not that big a deal um, from everything I've looked at as long as you have a you know efficient enough intercooler it's really not gonna make that big of a difference so um, I'll just do a 45 I'm gonna make um, a two inch intercooler pipe it's gonna come out right here we need to get our power steering mounted up here so we can actually fabricate the piece that's gonna live in here and we'll just have a silicone 45 there um, not sure if I'm going to be keeping this. I might just get rid of it. It's pretty easy to get rid of it. Just chop it off. It's basically just a breather port. It connects the breathers and stuff. But we're going to be using an AOS so from IEG, so I don't know if we're really going to need it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Um, so that's the main thing I've been working on right now is just actually getting all this stuff mocked up and figuring out what I need to order. <laughs> Because there's a lot of different solutions. I didn't want to take these fittings out. I didn't want to... Originally, I didn't want to make AN lines for this. But I think it's just in the long term. Uh, since this is going to be a street car, um, I'm going to be driving it a lot. I think it'll be the, the more reliable option. Um, and the next thing that I really need to focus on is going to be making a mount. Because this Perrin up-pipe kit... They don't have any kind of mount because I don't, I mean, they're not really designed to be, you know, long sustained use and I, it's already used. So I don't want it to crack. And so we're going to make some mounts. I'm thinking I'm going to bend up this metal and kind of make some kind of bracket that goes to there. Maybe this one over here as well. And <clears throat> it's a possibility we could make one. It's just a, a plate with a 90, you know, bent into it, cleaned it up, kind of just w just weld it straight to the pipe here. Um, just to give us some support, because this, this turbo is very heavy. Uh, it's still considered a small frame turbo. It's like a, the G3770 is like a 5460, kind of, I think, or 5660 or something like that. It's like a 54 millimeter blade. It's really not that big. It just looks really big. We got a big four inch intake and a two inch outlet. So it's, it's pretty much the same frame size as like a the old GTX 3582, but a much more efficient. Um, this is the 0.83 AR exhaust housing. So it shouldn't be too laggy. It should light pretty quick with a 2.5 liter. Um, yeah, I'm pretty excited to see how it does. Um, I've always wanted a legit Garrett Turbo. Like, this has been, this is like a dream right here. So, pretty excited about it. Okay, so moving on from that, I just wanted to showcase this really cool tool. This is from Company 23. This is actually for, um, it's kind of a dual purpose. It's for um, older 
uh, phase one engines that use these 17 millimeter bolts, but they also come with a little spacer right here that you can put on so you can use these aftermarket 17 mil bolts to hold those down. And so what's super nice about this is you can turn it over. Once you get it perfectly lined up, you just tighten this bolt on the back and it locks everything in place. So we can line up our timing belt and not have to worry about it flying off. <laughs> so super cool. Uh, come, check out Company 23. They make amazing products. Uh, if you work on Subarus, they're, they're stuff some must have. All right, there it is. So I still need to torque these down. I don't know, I'm gonna get the tool from work and we'll actually torque them um, because it, it will hold it from here and I can torque that down. I just got them pretty snug. I think it's about 65 foot pounds, but that tool to hold this one still worked perfect. Even though these weren't torqued down all the way, it was able to hold the cam still. I was able to get my timing marks lined up right here. Come on, focus, there we go. So these are always a little bit off just because of I don't know, manufacturing defects, but as long as the tooth count between here and here is this is correct, then we're, we're good to go. So this side you can see is kind of the same way. Um, all our marks line up. So we should be good to go. I just need to torque all these down. I do 30 foot pounds on all these pulleys. This one I think is like 22. It's a little 12 mil. Um, torque all these down, then I'll pull the pin and um, Rotate it around a few times to make sure we're still in time. And then I have these little covers that I need to get uh, dug out of the pile over there for those. But that'll be for another day. So at least for now, we have a timing belt. So it's pretty cool to see that done. So I'm also just mocking up the uh, throttle body. <clears throat> I had to, uh, I took the OEM gasket and I just wanted to, I trimmed it a little bit to make sure it was uh, visually pleasing. But uh, I decided I'm not going to be using these coolant ports that go on here. So I just looped this one back to itself. There's not any reason really to use them. Uh, it just kind of warms up the throttle body. So we can we can tune around that, so I'm not too worried about it. But this will make it a lot easier if I ever have to pull the manifold off. I don't have to open the cooling system. So um, I'll probably just leave these how they are. But I got this. So this is my uh, AM 3.5 bar map sensor. So this is a little cool little IAG um, adapter they, that uh, they sell. They, Cobb makes one, a bunch of people make one, but this is just the IAGs. Um, so it's pretty cool. It pops in there with an O-ring and it lets you put it in one of these. This is just kind of in here for mock-up. i got to put some thread tape on that guy. But uh, yeah, it's the AM 3.5 bar. I got all this stuff with my iWire kit. They sell it kind of as a kit, everything I need. So that's pretty cool. I need to finalize that guy. And uh, decide if I'm going to actually be keeping this thing. <clears throat> okay, so and lines are pretty easy. I'm sure you guys have seen how to make them many times, but I'm going to just put one end on. Um, you always want to try to like cut these so they're not all frayed like this, because when they're frayed like this, they're really hard to get inside the fitting. Um, but basically, just uh, get this part slid over this way. So get one slid over um, and get it butted up with the inside of the threads inside there. So it's all the way up. And then this part will actually go inside. Uh, let's see here. So you can see it's gonna actually go on to the threads there. And then when you tighten those down, it pulls that in and smashes that line in here on this. So what I like to do is we're gonna make one end like this. So this one's good. We just put it in the vise. If you have one of these aluminum wrenches, this helps um, not scratch them up, even though I did scratch them. Oh well, not too worried about it <clears throat> since it's my own car. Um, so this will help us get our length. And so we'll pop this guy on here and we'll kind of like, we can mark it on how long it needs to be. And we'll cut it. I like to put a little bit of tape on here, cut it with an angle grinder or something like that. Let's get a nice clean cut. Okay, so here is our mock-up, so we can see how long we need it to be. Um, we'll try to clock it how it's going to actually sit. And then we'll mark our hose right here and give it a cut. We'll do right at the top of these threads. Maybe a tiny bit extra, just so we have a little bit of room, because once we tighten those fittings down, it's going to pull them tight. Okay, <clears throat> so I got this cut off. Um, the tape kind of came off, but I think I could still use it. 
So we'll just go ahead and slide this guy on there. First, we need to get our end on here. So let me get that on and I'll show you how it goes. There we go. So I got that all on there. There is gonna be debris inside here, so make sure to clean it out when you're done. But we'll pop this side on here. And we have to put pressure on this while we're tightening that down so this doesn't slide off. So we'll use the vise for that. So just like this, get it started. I'm gonna use two hands and hold it and push up on it. So as we're pushing up and threading this down, it makes a nice crimp in there. Okay, so <clears throat> just got this one threaded on. It's threaded on all the way. This one just has much more threads showing. So this is fully seated. I just need to actually tighten it. And then we try to get this one on. Get this thing to focus. Did I really do this first try? I thought I was gonna have to make a couple of these to make this the right length, but. Look at that. Just like that. We have, can clock it down a little bit. These are all on swivels. And then we're gonna get some heat, sh heat shielding, one of those sleeves to go on that. There we are, oil drain done. Okay, so <clears throat> for coolant, it's gonna be the exact same thing. We're just gonna pop one of these guys on here first, get our length, and we'll cut it to length and we'll see. Okay, so I got this one kind of mocked up. Need to get this fitting in here. Um, still don't have that banjo, but we'll get it later. It's good enough for mock up. This one can be a little bit long, I think, and be just fine. So we'll get this fitting put on here and test fit it. Okay, there it is. So I got that end put on. Uh, what's cool about this one is these are swivel fittings, these vibrant fittings. So um, should be able to get this part lined up and then we can swivel this to fit the turbo but it's gonna take two hands to put on there so let me see how it fits okay got that put on there so this should hopefully reach this is gonna be really tricky because it kind of has to snake through this little area right here Wow, look at that, it fits. Not too bad. So once we get that right fitting right there, we can finalize all of it. Get this clock just right, is there still room there? There it is. All the plumbing switched over to AN lines. We just obviously have that little hose, but that's no big deal. So, sweet. So I have been collecting more parts. I don't quite have everything else I need for the fuel system yet, but I do have this. So these are my um, Injector Dynamics um, ID 13, 1300s. So these are the big dogs. Um, these should be good for about 500 horsepower. So IDX 1300s. Um, these are very expensive. So I went ahead and I saved up and I got these. Um, I also picked up a, this is a pretty good deal I could not pass up. So this was um, an access port for my ECU um, for about half the price. This was new in the box, never used. Um, sometimes you just got to be patient and find those deals. So there she is. So this is a V3 Sub-002, which should be good for my 05 STI ECU. So this will be... Um, Kind of what I use for in the meantime, I'm eventually this car is going to go Haltech. Um, since the whole car is wired um, as an 05 STI, I can just buy their plug and play kit. But for now, I really want to use the Cobb stuff and try out the factory ECUs. Um, you know, while I worked um, in the performance industry, I got a, a lot of hands on stuff with the Cobb stuff and um, I'm very excited to use it. So we're going to give it a shot because it's also. Uh, it's what I got. So um, a lot of times it's easier to just use what you have than it is to just spend way, way too much money you know, getting a bunch of aftermarket stuff. So um, I do have to pin these injectors. So it comes with all the pins and grommets and connectors. So when it comes time to go through this mess over here, I got my wiring harness 
here. I need to go through all this and clean it and um, we're gonna chop off those. Um, but those on there, um, I also have something very exciting here. So this is my um, delicious tuning um, flex fuel kit. So most people are probably wondering why I'm going with such giant injectors, 1300 cc injectors, and it's because I want to utilize E85. So um, this is really cool. Um, Delicious Tuning makes a great kit for this. Um, this is their little expansion box that ties into the fuel pump controller. Um, so we're going to have to figure out how to set all this up, but this, uh, this should tie in a flex fuel sensor. It comes with all these lines, fittings, pretty much everything I need um, to tackle um, the, the flex fuel system. Where is that sensor at? There it is. So look at that. So this is my flex fuel. This whole kit's made for an 05, so I'm gonna have to modify a few things to make it work. Um, but it uh, should be pretty straightforward. Um, adapting the actual lines and all that stuff should be easy, but getting that to attach to the car's hard lines, um, that's gonna be the hard part. So. We'll go through that once I get the car in the garage and we start actually getting I need the motor in the car and we'll mess with all the flex fuel stuff. Um, I'm still waiting on my rails. I got radium fuel rails. They're on back order. I've been waiting a month for the rails to get here. I don't know why all my other stuff showed up and the rails didn't. So we're just still waiting, but this is the other part of the kit that's really important. We went with a Aeromotive um, A1000. This is their Gen 2 fuel pressure regulator. These are widely known as being the most reliable uh, fuel pressure regulator on the market, at least for um, Subarus anyway. Um, the other, you know, the radium stuff and uh, other companies aren't bad, but this is kind of the go-to for, you know, over, over a certain about like 500 horsepower or so, uh, which we should be pushing about that, I'm hoping. So I still need to get my actual, I have the IAG fuel line kit I still haven't got that ordered yet. Um, every single one of these things is just super expensive. So just do my best to get what I can when I can. Um, it's collecting parts and we put stuff on as we go. So um, yeah, that's kind of how she goes. When those rails get here, I can mock up, I can put the injectors in. I do kind of want to paint these housings, these TGVs. Um, it's just they're, they're bare, they've been stripped bare aluminum and they don't have any kind of protective coating or anything so they're gonna get corrosive so I'm probably gonna take all this back apart clear coat these and just leave them silver but which is a nice little clear coat to protect them because like the OEM aluminum stuff like this like this OEM block has a basically has a sort of coating on it a treatment to the aluminum which this has all been stripped you can kind of see the color difference like these are a little it's a little bit shiny and so this will hold up under the weather with that well turn white and get corroded and all that so that's something I need to do but uh, fuel system will be for another day um, I need to just get those parts ordered get it set up but I think we're at a pretty good pretty good spot right now we got a timing belt on here uh, I need to get a thermostat but I just wanted to give you guys a quick update on where we're at with the wagon project um, it is slow going because you know, I'm paying for all this out of pocket and we don't make money on YouTube. So <laughs> this is, uh, this is real life here. So this is how things go, but, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, you know, give a like and like and subscribe, leave a comment if you want. Um, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.